All right, good Friday morning to you, October the 27th. We've got a lot of notes today, so it may take a little while to get through this. Luke uh, chapters 14, 15, and 16. In uh, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, Jesus is at the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees. He sits down to eat with them, and there's a man there who has dropsy. So Jesus looks at, as they're watching him and wanting to catch him doing something unlawful in their eyes, uh, he stands up or he's sitting there and saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He, he, he puts the ball in their court. He wants to talk to them about this and show them the, the error of their heart. So he points out to them uh, that they would work on the Sabbath if it benefited them or their possessions. So he heals the man of dropsy there. Verses 14 through uh, 7 through 14. He teaches about humil humility to those who wanted the most prominent places at the gathering. He says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Verses 15 through 24, Jesus teaches, his own, teaches on being invited to the kingdom of God, but declining the invitation. Uh, there's someone there that says, kind of trying to change the subject, says, blessed are those who shall eat in the kingdom of God, eat bread. Uh, basically what he's saying is, you know, we're going to be blessed if we go to heaven. That's in, in in a sense, changing the subject, but also kind of uh, throwing a little shade on Jesus. But as, he's, uh, as he says that, Jesus starts teaching on being invited to the kingdom of God and refusing the invitation. Because when you're invited, you have to abide by the invitation. You have to um, uh, play by the rules, so to speak. And what they were doing were making up their own rules. So Jesus pointed out to them that they were being invited to the kingdom of God, but they were declining the invitation. But many others, sinners in the eyes of those Pharisees, were being invited and they were accepting the invitation. In verses 25 through 32, uh, Jesus gives conditions of being a disciple, a follower, or, or learner of Jesus. And this is what he says in verse 27, Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, that's very exclusive. I was blessed to have a conversation with a couple of guys the other day about the Bible study and about the, um, the, the seed, the sower and the seed parable, where there's uh, four different kinds of seed. And, and they were asking, you know, which one of these seed types uh, are saved or going to heaven? And what I thought about that. Jesus here indicates that if you're not following him, then you're not his disciple. If you're not bearing your cross, then you're not his disciple. So there's three types of seed that did not follow him, did not bear their cross. The first seed, of course, it was snatched up, taken by Satan. The second seed had no root, so it, it faded away quickly. And the third seed was choked out by uh, weeds, briars, that sort of thing. So its productivity was drastically reduced, and it wasn't um, producing anything. But Jesus says the, the, the good soil received the good seed and it, it produced. And here he says, if you're not bearing your cross daily, denying yourself daily and coming after me, you can't be my disciple. Uh, so remember that. Remember, if you're not following Jesus, if you're not giving him honor and glory, then you need to check your heart to make sure that you are his Chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, the Pharisees accuse Jesus of being guilty by association. They say, you, you eat with sinners and receive them. But Jesus uh, points out to them in verses 10 through, uh, 3 through 10, uh, he, starts, he gives a couple of parables of the owners seeking their lost possessions. He's speaking of himself. He's talking about the lost sheep and the lost coin, but he emphasizes there that the owner... It, Speaking of himself, he's the owner and he's seeking those things that are lost. And at the end of the, the seeking, when that person is brought back or that, that lost item is brought back, there's praise in heaven. There's, there's uh, rejoicing in heaven over sinners that repent, not over the righteous people who re repent because, because the righteous don't realize they need to repent. But the, those who are, realize their lostness they, are, they do repent. Verses 11 through 32, Jesus uh, gives the parable of the prodigal son. So there's three 
main players in this, this uh, parable. The first is the prodigal, prodigal son, of course. Now, he's, he's the irreverent one. He's the one who doesn't respect his father, uh, asks for what his inheritance is going to be, and he leaves. He goes away, spends it all. Scripture says when he comes to himself, he realizes how good he had it, and he repents, comes back to his father and humbles himself and is received. The second player is the forgiving father. The father, first of all, he was gracious enough to give his son uh, out of time his uh, possessions, some, some of his inheritance, which was completely uh, opposite to tradition. And so the father was gracious to do that, but more merciful and gracious to receive him back and forgiving and uh, said, let's kill the fatted calf. Let's celebrate that this son is back. But there's another guy. And I call him the offended brother. Now, all through this, he was offended. He was offended at the prodigal son for, for doing what he was doing. Uh, and he was offended at the father for allowing the prodigal son to come back. But he was also offended that the father did not give him more recognition. He thought he was more important. And so he says at the end of that, you hadn't even given me a young goat so that I can go party with my friends. So he was offended at the father for not treating him better. Chapter 16, verses 1 through 10, uh, you get the parable of the unjust steward. And uh, in verse 10, Jesus says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. So Jesus says, make sure that you are uh, proving yourself trustworthy. Verses 11 and 12 talk about that. Uh, he says, who's going to trust you if you're untrustworthy? You have to prove yourself. You have to make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. And if not, you're not going to be trustworthy. Verse 13, he says, you can't serve two masters. It's either God or your stuff or yourself or your stuff. Verses 14 through 18, he talks about the lovers of money, speaking specifically about the Pharisees. And they were trying to justify themselves, but God is never fooled by that. In verses 19 through 31, uh, Jesus tells the, the story, not the parable, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And this is the comparison of the haves and the haves not here in this world and in the next. It doesn't matter how much stuff you have, if you don't go to heaven, it's worth nothing. So make sure Jesus says the first shall be last and the last shall be first.